Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, mysterious voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out of the ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Um, so we're at a new juncture here, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, it appears that I have a new um, Around the Weird Studios. I am in a new location. And if you're following what I said in my last video, um, I moved. Uh, I am in a new location. I am working at a university uh, in California, and it's it's been a busy month. I've I've moved from Washington. Um, I, I packed up my my things. I, I flew down here, and um, I managed to find a place to live beforehand. So it's been quite some time, and I've been trying to read. I got a. Um, a, I have access to my university's library, but I also have, I, I got a library card from the, the nearby library. Uh, so that's, that, that's good. I'll be able to get, get some books and um, have, um, have um, you know, be able to talk about some books when I get the chance. Unfortunately, I've been very busy in my new job. I just finished my first week. Uh, and it's, it's been a bit hectic and I'm trying to find, um, you know, a, a lovely balance where I figure out, you know, the, the exact details of my job and, and uh, you know, look up anything that, I, that needs to be looked up. And so I, I don't necessarily have a lot of time to read in the process. Uh, but I am, I am working to change that. I do want to continue this channel because it is so much fun talking about books. Um, and today is, is no different. So I, I wanted to talk about a book about feminism, uh, specifically black feminism and how uh, white women often exclude black individuals from feminism. Uh, I am referring to Hood Feminism by Mickey Kendall. For those who don't know, Mickey Kendall is a cultural critic often writing about feminism and, and how um, uh, feminism often leaves behind black uh, communities, as I, as I mentioned before, um, no noting uh, how there are food deserts for black individuals. She served in the military in the past, and she's written a number of essays, some of which she might have uh, um, uh, infused into, into this book, which is a, a collection of, of essays. Uh, so Mickey Kendall doing a lot of work to draw awareness and, and call people to action regarding feminism, feminism and feminist issues in America. So uh, without further ado, let's, let's get to this book. Um, I will provide a somewhat of a summary um, and analysis and we will move on from there. So Hood Feminism, as I, as I previously mentioned, is a collection of essays um, that are about individual topics, but they have a, um, an underlying theme uh, that they're about the black community, the hood, so to speak. Um, and so there's there's a lot, you know, underlying them and, and noting how a lot of these problems are caused by errors in politics or even be, uh, being left behind by, by white feminists. One thing that she talks about is, is solidarity. Um, she notes how in, in the past, um, uh, on Twitter, she, she uh, started the hashtag solidarity is for white women, particularly noting how throughout history, white women, who engaged in feminism often excluded a uh, black woman, whether that was intentional or unintentional um, uh, it remains to be seen. But a lot of times it was it was one or the other, both probably. Um, but black women have often been le uh, left to fend for themselves. You see that with Sojourner Truth, as well as another of other uh, black commentators throughout history who have dressed down uh, white feminists essentially, like Carrie Chapman Cat. And Susan B. An uh, B. Anthony, who and, and they've essentially said, "Hey, you know, in the process of fighting for your rights, you've excluded us, um, and a lot of times you've done that because you thought it was easier to get your rights." Well, maybe that's the case, but at the same time, like if you're excluding an entire group of women uh, for your cause, your your cause is not very feminist and. There's a number of issues there, which uh, Mickey Kendall, like saying that on Twitter, caused a little bit of an outrage uh, because you know white women don't like 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 to have their faults um, <laughs> acknowledged. And it, uh, but it's important to talk about this: how black women are excluded from movements because they they feel that they're strong black women out there 
uh, or that uh, sometimes black women need to make need to make sacrifices, and once the white women get what they want, then then they'll move on to uh, the issues that black women face. But that so rarely, or if ever, happens. Uh, she also goes on to talk about gun violence in black communities. Mickey Kendall notes that she's not anti-gun. Like she she ha is thrilled with going off to gun ranges and firing guns, but she believes that the most powerful guns need to stay there or in professional settings. That particularly powerful guns need to stay off the streets because when they do get to the streets, there it primarily affects black communities. She also notes um, about how the police um, enact gun violence against black men in particular but also uh, black women. And it notes how the guns themselves aren't the problem. It's merely the laws that are being created and the loopholes that, that exist that allow for these um, guns to enter black communities mostly and affect uh, people of color. And so she really um, uh, notes how we need to uh, draw awareness to black communities in, in this regard uh, and also make sure that uh, there are no loopholes that allow guns to enter black communities in this way. She also talks about hunger and homelessness and how it particularly affects single black mothers um, who uh, who don't really have the opportunity to uh, you know go out and fight for for political equality and to address you know politicians especially um, uh, over eager politicians who want to enact their agenda and take away um, the, the social safety nets. She notes that, uh, that these welfare programs are very helpful in bridging the gap or even uh, helping with long-term homelessness, but there's this idea of the welfare queen or something like that uh, and how um, black women or even black individuals, people of color, will take advantage of the welfare programs for their own gain or something like that. You see this especially in, um, in modern, uh, like right now, uh, not only with the idea of the welfare queen but also with with politicians racist politicians saying like oh the latinos are coming into the country and are exploiting our welfare systems uh, and so they're using that 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 fictional problem that doesn't really exist to take away from these social 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 welfare programs which primarily affects you know single single parent families and also the children because they're, they're where are they getting their food from that's a that's a big question she also goes on to talk about sexual freedom, particularly noting how black women um, are highly sexualized. And not only that, but their uh, the idea of their innocence is taken away pretty quickly. Uh, you see that on, on the news where when you have a, a young white girl, she's referred to as young. She's still seen as innocent and a minor. But... Um, young black girls are often left to fend for themselves in, in media narratives and if, if something happens to them when it's like oh they, they're adults in, in, in those eyes um, and so and this also happens with fetishization, fetishization um, where black women or even like Native American women become fetishes and they're no longer human beings they're viewed as sex objects so these media representations of, of black women and whatnot need to be addressed before, you know, um, sex, sexual violence is done against uh, these individuals. And that's another area that she calls to attention. She also talks about respectability politics, which is the idea that if you want to address politicians or, or bring awareness to an issue, you have to be kind. Um, you can't use hateful words or, or be angry. You have to... You have to uh, represent the community in a certain way, um, otherwise you'll uh, you'll bring the community back uh, a whole uh, like years in, in the process, and so you have to behave a certain way, code switch, and make sure that you're not uh, you're not offending anyone in the process. Um, but uh, as uh, Kendall points out, like that's a problem because the oppressor in, in any situation wants you to be nice. They want you to to sort of internalize that message in your community so that anyone who tries to speak out and be, you know, angry is is pushed to the margins even more and you get a whole bunch of soft speaking people and and it makes it easier for those politicians to ignore you because you're you're speaking softly now and no one like they they never really wanted to to address you in the first place. So it makes sense to be angry, to be out there, to be loud and not to uh, police 
the members of the community who are speaking out and speaking loudly because that's just adhering to what the oppressors want. And even um, Kendall even notes that like anger is a good thing, how using that anger um, can get stuff done and, and draw awareness of persistent issues. Uh, finally, she, she goes on to talk about a bunch of other issues, uh, beauty, colorism, trauma, missing black women, uh, and how the police don't investigate uh, crimes across races equally. I'm not going to go into th these uh, things specifically. There's just a lot to talk about there. But I do recommend you going out and finding the book um, and, and reading those uh, about those um, things that she talks about. And then lastly, she talks about accomplice feminist, basically uh, people who, who are woke, as, as you would fine uh, who are engaging in social justice work but listen to people in in black communities color communities of color and seek to be allies rather than um giving into fear or uh, giving into white supremacy and and um pu pushing these people by the wayside or even throwing them under the bus um there needs to be actual accomplices if any progress is going to be made in these community and also even shutting up and listening <laughs> like like right now like in Instead of maybe me making this video, you know, um, I should have amplified a black voice perhaps, uh, but it's too late now. So those are a bunch of issues that she um, uh, she raises awareness of, and that's about where the story ends there. In terms of analysis, there is a bit to talk about with uh, with this book. It's a pretty solid book, and one thing that it, that really draws my attention as as I was reading this is how broken the system is for black women in particular. It's broken for all people of color, um, black men, but for black women, they're at a severe disadvantage because every part of the system just doesn't work for them. And I've heard about this from, from black women before. I've listened to their st stories and I've, I've been like, wow, that, that sounds like something that needs to be fixed. But reading it here, it's really brought awareness uh, for me about how broken it is. Uh, people point to like education as a, as a way of fixing things, but um, for black women, like the education system uh, demonizes them for being black. There's segregation, there's um, issues with bullying teachers, there's issues with uh, teachers going out of their way to punish students of color. Um, it, in terms of the police, the, the police um, might engage in sexual violence towards women of color. Um, th th there's police violence in the community, so that that's an area that's broken. In terms of jobs, there's a lot of discrimination against black women. Um, they have to code switch in the workplace so they can seem professional. Um, that that includes, you know, speaking um, speaking. Um, white as, as it would be rather than in, in their vernacular and their and how they talk in their community and even um hair is a big deal like uh, if women have hair that isn't deemed professional like afros or whatnot or even weaves that can be um deemed unprofessional in the workplace and maybe grounds for firing or or harassment by hr or something like that and so you really see in every facet of their lives how the system is broken for black women like how they even function in their daily lives, like how they're able to get anything accomplished is kind of a feat. Uh, they have to engage in so much work. And so you can understand what kind of stress they're under or what kind of, what kind of, you know, trouble they're dealing with on a regular basis and how they need accomplices. They need, they need people who maybe aren't white, not to save them, but to hear their stories and to work with them to fix the, the errors, the, the problems in their community, the problems that exist in the United States as a whole. And so that that's um, that that's key there too. Is is not um, is not you know white saviors, but you know accomplices, people who will will listen and and fight on, on behalf of them. Another issue that pops up is the idea of solidarity um, that I mentioned before, basically how uh, in feminist movements in the past, white women have left black women by the wayside, um, either because they center their own interests first, or they, they actively understand that if they exclude black women, then white men will be more likely to pay attention to them and they might gain more power in the process. And Mickey Kendall rightfully 
calls that out and calls it BS, how it's a how it's a giant problem. And that if you engage in the patriarchal system and the white supremacist system, you're putting yourself as at a disadvantage because you know once the the white supremacist system takes care or addresses the, the problem of black people and, and Latino people and all, all the other races, they're gonna come for the women. Like the women are going to be at a disadvantage. So if you if you side with your oppressor in any issue, like that's a pr helping the oppressor to one day uh, just make your life even more difficult. Um, and so it benefits the oppressor to have have um, sort of sell out traitor traitors from the uh, from the group asking for change. And so the the solidarity that actually needs to happen is with with black women with women of color because that'll um that'll help that'll help bring down the patriarchy help bring down the white supremacist system and that's not happening at the moment that's something that definitely needs to be addressed um uh, when when fighting these these feminist issues another thing that i really liked that mickey kendall touched upon is re is respectability politics I've, I've often heard this a lot um especially in the in the last year, what with the the riots over the George Floyd protest and and um, Breonna Taylor, how uh, politicians are like, oh, I would be more interested in listening to you if you didn't shout so loud or you or you weren't rioting, and it's like, well, you weren't listening before, like you like Ted Cruz and all of them, they weren't listening, they were making fun of these communities before, um, and when and so if that was if you weren't listening to them then when they were asking nicely. Um, it sounds like you're not going to listen to them at all. Um, and so, re again, respectability is the tool of the oppressor. And what's worse is that Kendall touches upon how this, uh, this, uh, the respectability politics are internalized by the community uh, as a means of sort of from within the community themselves, the oppressor being like, oh, only these people will be listened to. And so the people who don't fit that category are... Um, again, left by the wayside and, and um, further marginalized. And so uh, there's a good quote that I would like to read to you about that type of thing. Respectability politics are, at their core, an easy way to avoid engaging with history and current events. If we admit that blackness comes in many forms, that our culture is glorious and worthwhile, then we have to face the fact that we will never be able to achieve this mythical space where color doesn't matter, where our class and culture is respected, where we want a route to undo the impact of history, and it simply doesn't exist. We point to the suits and ties and dresses worn during the civil rights movement and ignore that the people in them were still beaten, still arrested, still lynched. We sneer at the innovations in the hood until we see them on the right celebrities. We adore the idea of a fierce black girl who fights back, but we penalize her as soon as she does it. And I feel like that's a great quote uh, by, uh, by by her, um, where, she, where she talks about like, we have this idea of the people who will get listened to, like the Martin Luther King Juniors and the, maybe the Malcolm X's, although he's a, I think he's a bad example, but like the people in the suits and the people who are nice. But we forget that they assassinated Martin Luther King Jr. They assassinated Ma Malcolm X. They assassinated a lot of the people who stood out. And so it doesn't matter if you're nice or not, if you're, if you're respectable with your politics. They're either going to ignore you either way or they're going to try to kill you if you, if you your reach gets too far and so I, I feel like that's um that's a good message that um uh kendall is trying to to get at that you have to remember that no matter how you talk to the oppressor the oppressor's only goal is to further oppress you uh and then uh she also talks about how like anger is good and how anger can can help like um like draw attention to your to the issues that you face and um can em embolden and impassion people and there's another quote that i would like to read to you from this anger can be cathartic motivating and above all an expression of the innate humanity of any community demands that the oppressed be calm and polite and that forgiveness come before all else are fundamentally dehumanizing if your child is killed by the police if the water in your community is poisoned if a mockery is made of your grief how do you feel do you want to be calm and quiet do you want to uh, do you want to forgive in order to make everyone else comfortable or do you want to scream to yell to demand justice for wrongs done and that's a fascinating and really good quote because it gets at the issue uh, in flint michigan the water was poisoned and if you're nice about it nothing gets done and if you shout about it people can really become aware that an entire community's water was was 
poisoned, essentially, and nothing was done because that community was black. And you need to shout at those times because simply staying calm and being ignored time after time and time, it, it, it's not good. And so, you know, that anger is a necessary part of a revolution, of a positive change, a progressive change. And no matter who says, you know, respectability is the only thing that matters, that person is either lying to, lying to you or they're, uh, they, they don't understand how the oppressor uses respectability against marginalized communities. And so with all of this that Kendall talks about, what solutions are being offered? What, what does she talk about? And I, I do have to say much more so than the other books that I've read that have a social justice bent. Kendall does offer a number of solutions that I think are very helpful um, in terms of, of fighting the patriarchy and fighting the white supremacist system that allows for white feminism to thrive over, over feminism for everybody. Specifically, she talks about, you know, community change, um, talking with individuals, talking with community members to change their, their beliefs and um, to educate them about where they might be wrong and start at that local level uh, so that you can, you can build upwards to, to maybe the system wide and, and fix those issues there. But not every issue, you know, can be solved at the local level. She also talks about voting and protest. That's again where like the, the, the anger comes into play, where if, you, if you're if you angry and you shout loud enough about an issue, enough people will become aware of it that uh, you can bring bring more awareness of it. There was an attempted media blackout of uh, Standing Rock back in like 2015, and the natives in, the commu in, in that community managed to shout loud enough and be angry enough that it drew awareness of others who, who, were, who were coming to, to help and offer their aid and, and hopefully be more than just white saviors. Uh, so that's, um, that may not be a black community, but that's how you know, anger draws awareness. And I, I think that's a, a very helpful tool in any protest. And then the last uh, potential solution is true solidarity. Rather than throwing anybody under the bus or siding with the oppressors, white women in particular, and also you know, academics like me, should, should listen to individuals in black communities. And rather than trying to be the white savior, as I've been noting repeatedly, uh, is, to, is to try to seek true solidarity by listening to them, by giving them a room uh, to espouse their, their, the issues that they're facing and, and talking about the systemic problems that they're noticing and not trying to be too defensive or pushing back on, on the suggestions that they have, even if the suggestions are, are pretty critical of myself. And that's what we need for true solidarity. It's, it's not enough to simply, you know, hear the, the problems that exist. You have to fight them whenever possible. And so um, I believe that uh, Mickey Kendall has a lot of really good ideas, um, in addition to, you know, uh, excellent ways of drawing attention to all the problems that exist um, for, for uh, black Americans and especially black women. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Hood Feminism, a pretty solid book um, about uh, black women and feminism in black communities. Um, but it also applies to, you know, other communities and especially black men. Uh, there's a lot to talk about here and I definitely recommend that you go out and find this book. I was able to find it um, uh, pretty cheap online, although my friend managed to give me a free copy. So uh, that's, that, I, I can't really talk about cost there. But I do recommend, again, finding it. I, I, I strongly recommend this book. It's a, it's very eye-opening and, and very, um, uh, I guess, if you're social justice oriented, it's very motivating for how you can help um, communities and, and not simply be a white savior. Um, otherwise, you know, if you read this before, you, you simply want to comment on my review, feel free to do so below. I would love to hear from you and have a discussion about this book. Um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can find out about Mickey Kendall's work and also about this book and how to be a, a proper ally. And otherwise, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and uh, feministy travels. Farewell.